Faithful, welcome to episode eight of STL FC Insider. As always, a lot of action. Let's check out what we have in this week's episode. Coming up on this week's episode of STL FC Insider, we go behind the shield with St. Louis FC goalkeeper coach Brian Jones. Took a risk. Um, decided to go to Belgium. Looked up a guy who's a hero of mine, goalkeeper. He just retired the year before. He's the best goalkeeper in the world at the time when he played. He's a guy named Jean Marie Faf. Then we're checking in with the Community Outreach Upper 90 Initiative. We'll also have another fan favorite, Dan's Dozen. And rounding out this week's episode, as always, your USL Goals of the Week. So far this season, we've given you a behind the scenes peek at some of our players, but now it's the coaching staff's turn. We sat down with goalkeeping coach Brian Jones. Let's go behind the shield. 20 seconds to go. I'll go right around the cone. Yep. Oh, that's good match. Here we go. Yep, get there. Oh, good effort, good effort. Sorry. Grew up here in St. Louis. You know, I had made an interesting decision coming out of high school. I could have gone to college, play with you know guys who went on to play for SLU, Indiana, guys who became All Americans, guys who became you know heroes in our country, Brian McBride's of the world, you know, Mark Santels, all these guys. Uh, decided to go to try Europe, and it was at a time when it wasn't, you know, uh, it was a hard thing to do. There weren't a whole lot, you weren't well received, um, and uh, I took a risk, um, decided to go to Belgium, looked up a guy who was a hero of mine, a goalkeeper, he just retired the year before, he was the uh, best goalkeeper in the world at the time when he played, he was a guy named Jean-Marie Faf, and I flew in and uh, put my stuff in a hotel room, like a, you know, a cheap hotel got on the bus that was going to that part of town and asked the bus driver, hey, do you know what part of like the area? You guys, guys are like, yeah, I know exactly what street he lives on. I'll tell you when to get off. And bus driver told me to get off of the street, walk down about a mile, mile and a half. He had a big gate, big iron, you know, 10 foot tall wrought iron fence around the property and you ring the buzzer and nobody really speaks English too much. His dad answered, who speaks no English and, and uh, passed it on to his wife, Carmen, and Carmen speaks a little. And, and I tried to explain to her as best I could, I need help. I'm an 18-year-old American. I'm good at what I do. I want to be here. I want to play. I, you know, I want your husband to help me, basically. She came out, talked to me a little bit. He was sleeping, apparently. She went back in, uh, woke him up. He came out the door, you know, his little groggy. He's kind of staring down the driveway at me. Not necessarily a happy camper. He comes walking down with Carmen. She translates a little bit. And, and, and credit to him, you know, he's a great human being. As good of a player as he was, he's a better human being. And he invited me in for breakfast. It was in early in the morning, 8.39. And he talked, and I had breakfast with him and his three daughters, and his wife and his dad, and, and he said, okay. And then he brought me out to the field. And, and at the end of the day, you gotta be able to put up or shut up. And I got it done and did well. And he was surprised. He's like, holy cow, there's an American doing this. Like at this level and this quality technically and stuff. And he said, yeah, I'll help you, no problem. So I stayed in his house, I lived in his house for, for a bunch of weeks and you know, he took me around and it's, it's kind of akin to being a basketball player and walking up to Michael Jordan's house and going, can you help me? And him taking you around everywhere he goes and you're like, you know, you're with the Michael Jordan of goalkeeping. And uh, so that started, uh, played there for St. Nicholas for a while. They took me to a tournament, um, like a U19 tournament, four games, played well, did well for myself. People were a little surprised, hey, there's an American. Um, and then a couple years later, looked at Portugal, decided to look into Portugal, a, a guy named Dan Gaspar, and he was the coach of uh, Sporting Lisbon at the time, uh, the goalkeeping coach, and he saw me and said, hey, maybe you should come to Portugal, and maybe you should look into this, and let me help you, try to line some things up. And, and then 96 came around and MLS started and came back to, uh, to MLS in that first year. And everybody was kind of positioned based on 
like you know geography where you grew up. So all the St. Louis, most of the St. Louis guys anyway, ended up in Kansas City. Me, Billy Baumhoff, Matty McEwen, Mike Sorber. Uh, so we all ended up in Kansas City, and it was interesting because all those guys were on my Gallagher team. <laughs> we all played on the same Gallagher team, and now we're you know everybody's in MLS and stuff like that. Um, lasted a year. It wasn't a great experience, to be honest with you. It was a bad experience for me. So we tried in LA. This guy coached at the time, Lothar Osiander, who was the head coach, and he had Campos, and he liked me a lot. Um, there was you know this idea that hey, we got two of these kind of goalkeepers, one American, one Mexican, and they can both do things that are very similar. And, and, and so when Jorge was playing for the national team at the time, the thought was we can insert this guy and we're not going to lose anything. It's the same style, it's the same skill sets. Um, and, and he ended up getting fired uh, about mm, four or five weeks later. And a guy named Octavio Zabrano came in and uh, said no. Nah. And that, that was the end of it, really. That it was like, Mentally, I kind of, you know, spiraled out of control and, and couldn't recover from it. And don't forget to join us next week for part two of our sit-down with goalkeeper coach Brian Jones as he shares with us his coaching resume and explains what he looks for in a professional keeper. All that's coming up on next week's STL FC Insider. If you have a special night coming up, don't forget St. Louis FC has hosted various parties at our matches. Whether your party is a birthday, anniversary, bachelor or bachelorette party, our team of ticket representatives can customize your night to maximize your experience. Visit stlouisfc.com for more details. The St. Louis FC players sure have given us fans plenty of memories so far this season. This week, though, we sat down with them to find out what their favorite soccer memories are. Let's check out this edition of Dan's Dozen. When I was about 16, we went and I uh, played for Newcastle. We went and played in a tournament in Spain, and we played uh, Real Madrid Youth Academy and Barcelona's Youth Academy, and that was a really good experience. So, probably making my debut for Swansea in the English Championship. That was the highlight of my career, I think. I went to Arsenal, so I got to meet Arsene Wenger. I was training with the youth, youth system there, with the youth team, uh, Jack Wilshire. Uh, I think Coquelin was training there too, so that was one of my uh, favorite memories. When I debuted for the national team at home um, in Auckland, in front of my family, friends, uh, it was a pretty big moment for me, for my career. Uh, my when I made my uh, my debut for the national team, it was against Argentina. You know, playing with all those big players, just, uh, I was I was surprised. I was, it was unbelievable. Probably scoring a goal against uh, Order in the City in the USL at their place. Um, probably has to be winning the national championship at Indiana um, in 2004. That was a great experience for me. Uh, and also winning a championship in Tampa Bay also is up there. Winning the national championship with my under-17 Gallagher team, with all my buddies. Got to go with the national championship. I won 2012 with Indiana. Either my MLS debut or winning the uh, national championship in college. Probably winning the Conference USA championship uh, with the University of Tulsa. It was a long, hard-fought season worked toward a common goal and we achieved it. My freshman year of college, um, we made a conference final and uh, I scored a winning goal in like the 85th minute. Yeah, just uh, took it from 18 to 18, hit it side net. It's probably um, finding out that I got in a scholarship, an academic scholarship but pro soccer to come to the U.S. in 2008. Had a few good memories uh, with Missouri State when the, when the conference three out of four years. I would say winning the state championship here in St. Louis um, from a high school, Chaminade. Stick around, we've got much more to come on STL FC Insider. Hey Dad. Hey sweetie, that was your first week. It's long. <laughs> It'll get better. I'm at the Edward Jones office like Sue suggested. Thanks for doing this Dad. So I thought it might be time to talk about a financial strategy. <laughs> You mean pay him back. Knowing your future is about more than just you. So let's start talking about your long-term goals. Multiplied by 13,000 financial advisors. It's a big deal. And it's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. The 
we're donating back to the community for those kids who want a chance to be able to play soccer, who don't have the capability of getting cleats, balls, socks, training gear. We did this Upper 90 project last year and we thought we wanted to build on it, take shoes back to Columbia, uh, shoes, shirts, uh, for, the, for the kids there. Me being from Colombia, I work with a nonprofit organization that uses soccer as a tool to get kids out from those rough environments. Our kids here are generous bringing in their old training shirts, their cleats that don't fit anymore. Um, kids are even bringing in new things that they've bought for the other kids that are less fortunate so they'll be able to have a chance to play the game that everybody here loves. And that helps absolutely. That's those kids play barely with some sandals, whatever they have, and this will help a lot. And then the other project is we went to Fairmont City uh, and did a camp there for, for the locals there. Uh, and we were lucky enough to you know, meet a lot of great people. They're running their youth program right now, so we're helping them to build their soccer program that helps their youth soccer players there. So we got their training equipment. We were there two weeks ago, helped them with training. We're going to have about 320 people here today. Um, everybody brought donations, everybody's hanging out, having a good time, um, eating, just having a good time and for a good charity. Unbelievable turnout. We have uh, about 100 kids, I believe, uh, and then of course family, and we extended it to families and cousins and, and whatnot. So I'm guessing, looking around, there's probably about four or 500 people here. Hopefully they enjoy the day. We'll be right back with more on STLFC Insider. James drove his RAV4 hybrid into no man's land and rescued a group of stranded enthusiasts. He was invited to join the crew, no. but left in search of potable water. How far will you take the RAV4 hybrid? Toyota, let's go places. And closing this week's show, let's check out the USL Goals of the Week. You get four goals in 250 minutes. Blackwood lays it off. Rooney fires! Oh, he scored! Oh, what a finish! And Luke Rooney pulls one back before halftime. An extremely tough place to play there at Switchback Stadium. Bird with the blast and the shot. It hits the back of the net. Oh, the one-timer. And the shot from Bird gives RGV FC the four goal lead here in the 82nd minute. Sent in by Charleston. Moose was able to clear for the moment. Shot on net and into the back of the net from distance. Number seven, Obi Woodbine. Unbelievable blast to yeah, end right the first the half. What an absolute cannon. Ross finds his man inside the box briefly. Here's a shot from the outside. And what a goal to open up for OKC. Is that Pitter that let that one go from the outside? I believe that it is. And Oklahoma City strikes here early. See if they can hold on that. Here's Tommy Thompson, good run, able to volley it in. Tommy Thompson, one touch, two touch, three touches in the net. Beautiful, Tommy Thompson. Are you kidding me? That's the third goal. On behalf of all of us here at St. Louis FC TV and the rest of the Flirtily Faithful, thanks for watching.